no, you, you want a sandwich? No, I'm alright. <laughs> you don't want one? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll pass. Really? Dang. <sighs> Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back. Here we are. This is this is day number two. Tackle Warehouse Invitational Sam Rayburn. Dude, and you know what? Okay, look, I got a pet peeve. And I know you guys feel me on this. When the peanut butter is real low and you gotta dig in there real deep and you get some on your fingers, that's a pet peeve, bro. I don't like it. And we about to go deep <laughs> with a real handle. See, look, see, see. Oh, dude, the, the, the knob hits. <laughs> that's not gonna work. The, the knob hits. <laughs> All right, we're sending it. Just give you the fingers. Oh, we gotta go up. Oh. We gotta go up. Well, guys, uh, I'm not gonna lie. Day one, we landed ourselves in 60th place. Top 50 gets paid, gets out of here. But these invitationals, I'm not fishing them to like lay up. You know, it's just one of them deals. I'm honestly doing it to get better as a fisherman. You know, with with the ever changing of forward facing sonar. You gotta be on top of it. And to be honest with you, I didn't do a whole lot of practicing in, in the off season. So I'm kind of true. All right, guys, we're, we're gonna slide in here because let me be honest with you, man, cameras this week have been a struggle. I mean, it's downpouring rain, fog, this and that. We've had a couple camera malfunctions, but hey, I just wanna break it down to you exactly why we are here not here because we're, we're in my garage right now and hey this is actually my tin rig right here boys and hey we're actually going to go over this rig i've been busting my butt on this but uh, hey enough of that let's talk about sam rayburn but i want to get ahead and break it down to you exactly what we're doing here and why adrian avena is fishing sam rayburn right for starters guys there's no better way to learn a particular technique or to get more experience than to actually fish tournaments. And don't get me wrong, your boy's having a very, very, very expensive learning experience, about nine grand, because I did not catch them this week. And realistically, it was, it was a grind, and I was being hard-headed, because for me, the only way that I can truly learn it and learn it better is to put my time on it. I just told myself that I really, really, really wanted to just get better at it. It's another tool, but it's a tool that if you don't learn to put down, you're gonna get your teeth kicked in, and that's what happened to me. Let's just cut to the chase. You guys are watching this right now to learn, and I'm gonna, uh, and, and basically I'm gonna break it down to you guys. Your boy's learning a lot. You know, you can only, you know, watch so many YouTube videos, you can only talk so much information with, I mean, I travel with some of the best guys in the world, and there's only so much you can learn from talking back and forth until you actually put yourself in real time scenarios. And the one thing that I've learned, Toledo Ben, Sam Braburn, bass swim fast and they swim a lot you know historically we always thought man bass lived on brush piles or you know pre-spawn bass lived on the secondary point before they went to go spawn dude there's a lot of myths out there you know that we all thought were the textbook of bass fishing that forward facing sonar over the last three years has proved 90 percent of that to be false so me even though i'm young right i consider myself on the front side of my career you know, I haven't been doing this really too god awful long, but man, I've learned a lot over the last few years. And the one thing that I've learned is really over the last couple of events now is being able to distinguish what's a bass and what's not. And that's one question I get asked all the time, whether it be here on YouTube or, or on, on my social media, Instagram, Facebook, and man, Adrian, you know, I see so many fish out there. How do I distinguish what's a bass and what's, you know, a, a catfish or a carp, a drum? And what I could tell you, this week, whatever I seen anything that was swimming fast, that was in that top 10 feet of the water column, that was a bass. And now, guys, I'm not gonna lie, and you're gonna see maybe in this video that there's times where I'm making five, six, seven, eight, you know, 10 casts at a bass before I finally catch them. And the one thing that I realized is that once you keep an eye on what you think is a bass, and if he's swimming quick, if you don't kick that trolling motor on like 60 or 80 percent to catch up to them, a lot of times that bass is going to get outside of your 100 foot, which, where I have my my distance always set at 100 feet. It's going to get outside of that, and before I know it, he's going to be halfway back in the creek. Learning that a bass is swimming fast and he's in the top 10 feet of the water column. If something was stationary, it wasn't a bass. If something was 
swimming kind of slow and real lethargically, maybe down there towards the bottom a little bit. A lot of times that wasn't a bass for me. Uh, but this week, top 10 feet of the water column, swimming fast. And if you ever found two or three together, it was almost a guarantee. And when it comes down to presentation, guys, I mean, I don't know wh where there's more controversy, forward-facing sonar or a jig head minnow, because literally forward-facing sonar and a jig head minnow, that combination has caught more bass and is probably gonna win more tournaments this year than a Gary Yamamoto Senko, because literally it's going to rule them in this year. And uh, rule of thumb, if bass are moving really fast and he's down 10 to 20 feet, I like to use a little bit heavier of a weight, maybe like a quarter ounce. But if he's riding really high, like I'm talking about three to 10 feet of water, I like to use the lightest weight I can because the most important thing about a jig head minnow and forward facing sonar is you need to ride it and float it above them. If you're not floating that bait above them, if it's getting down below them, that bass is gonna know it's not real, it's gonna, it's gonna run away from your bait, or it may follow it all the way to your boat but never commit. But if you can keep that presentation above the bass, here's the bass, this is your presentation. If you can keep it above them and almost slightly go up, He's gonna get ahead and he's gonna ambush that and eat it from behind and, and uh, you're gonna end up getting a lot of bites that way. But uh, those are a couple things. Was that a couple? Kind of have to piece that together. Oh, for those of you guys that are still with us right now, I appreciate you guys watching these videos. But in the meantime, let's slide over. We're gonna watch some of the fish catches we have, but remember, we only have one camera on and we got a long season ahead of us. So let's hop on, let's go see what we got over there and hopefully we'll do better at the next one. All right, we're going deep. We're, we're, we're just, I mean, we're committed now, guys. We're, we're, I mean, I mean, we're, we're, we're committed. Oh, yeah. We're committed. So, yeah, this, this, this right here pretty much, you know, sums up my week here, you know, guys, you know. I am, I am a smooth peanut butter guy. I'm not a chunky. Just got to make sure I don't, uh, don't hit nobody in front of me here. Got to pay attention to the road. Oh, oh should the like, people bring, like, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to the rim? Yeah. Before you instead of, like, yeah, like, like Incrustables? Yeah, yeah Incrustables. <laughs> yeah, that'd be freaking amazing. First person that gives me one of them, man, I'm going to give you free. I'm going to, uh, you know what? I may give you some baits. <laughs> For an Incrustable. For an Incrustable. It's a fair trade. Yeah. So, I got a question. What am I going to do with this other peanut butter and jelly sandwich I'm not going to eat? Huh? Oh, well... I think you should just wrap it up in the towel and take it. <laughs> <laughs> wrap it up in the towel. This towel, I just got done wiping my boat off with it. You know, I can, I can, yeah, I can wrap it up in this. Yeah, we do. All right. Now I was just sitting here talking, talking to Spencer. Spencer, honestly, man, we fished a team series together last year. One of the best scopers out, period. Like, I, I say top five in the world of scoping, and we both had the same day. He had 12, I think at 12, 12, I had 12, 10, so we're just two ounces apart. We were just talking about it a little bit. You know, he had one day of practice where he literally caught like over 30 pounds doing this. So it's just random out here, man. Like, I think honestly, you can go to the bank and you can catch 12 pounds, or you can go out there and catch 12 pounds. So I think what I'm going to do, because I do feel a little bit more comfortable going out there panning around, like I said, I want to get better at it too is uh, I'm going to start off doing that, but as you guys can see, it's drizzling outside, rolling up in the ground in gear, it's screaming shout, so we're going to keep it honest, but follow along guys, see what we can do. Oh, don't tell me, dude. You gotta be kidding me, I forgot my sunglasses. Oh, they're behind my head. Sunglasses behind my head. Hey, they hiding. Hey, BJ, we a wreck, bro. Hey, we a hot mess all the time. But, we're gonna make it happen today. We're gonna make it happen. Yeah. 
99. Come on up here, man. That's what you got a man, 12 pounds and 10 ounces yesterday. You can be consistent. 12 pounds and 3 ounces, 24 pounds and 13 ounces.